This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 6, Episode 6. I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the Mighty Hogstein Network on audio and YouTube on video. So we took a break. A lot happened, <laughs> but we'll start off. The free agency starts on Wednesday officially, but it's already kind of wink, wink going on anyway. Yeah. Uh, since we've already seen some stuff in the Washington Commanders, this is our first show with them, I think. Uh, Washington Commanders kept a couple, lost a couple on this. But first off, we're talking about Carson Wentz. And it, they traded uh, basically a couple threes, maybe one of the two to finally get the quarterback and everybody was like, ah, but you know, I ran a poll on my YouTube page, Rick Snyder's Washington. First I had like 700 votes and 66% were okay with the trade. So Twitter, you can't ever judge because Twitter's just a bunch of angry trolls. Sorry, Twitter. And, uh, but you know, overall you look at it and go, well, look at these other deals going on. And maybe that was the best they could pull off anyway. I'm okay with Carson Wentz. I think, when healthy and in the right spot, he has shown to be a good quarterback. Not a great, but a good one. And if it's the wrong spot, well, then it ain't going to work or he gets hurt. Gets hurt again, Taylor will play. But yeah. I didn't think it was a bad deal overall. No, and I mean, especially considering the day before we had just saw Russell Wilson get moved to the Broncos, obviously that was probably my number one on the wish list uh, was Russ. Um, but look at what the Broncos gave up. They gave up five draft picks and three players, including – a really decent uh, tight end and a pretty decent defensive player. Um, but the problem with the Russell Wilson deal is, you know, give him a year or two, whenever his contract runs out, you know, Aaron Rodgers the day before set the market. Actually, it was the same day, set the market for quarterbacks. I mean, he's getting $50 million a year. Russ is going to want 40 some million dollars, you know, a year. And that's, I, I just don't think you take that on right now. Um, you know, with, with the holes and the gaps that they have to fill. Look, I, I'm I'm okay with the Wentz deal. It was a low-risk, possible high-reward type of deal. Um, you know, I know the cap number is is brutal. The $28 million, it pretty much wiped out all of our cap, uh, which led to the release of Landon Collins, and they're trying to work out the deal with Eric Flowers and all that stuff. But um, I look at it like this, Rick. He, he <laughs> He's a reclamation project. You know, I got a buddy of mine who's an Eagles fan. Wentz, that year that they went to the Super Bowl, Wentz was on just a tear. And then he got hurt. You know, he saw Foles come in, win the Super Bowl, and that really kind of killed his confidence. And I think that a lot of his errors and stuff are mental. If that's something that Ron and all them can overcome and get him to play like he played in 2017, 2018, you know, it's a damn good deal. And, and, and I look at it like this, he plays for one year. If he flops, you get rid of him. If not, there's an option for next year and you've got a lower cap number. I think he's making $20 million next year. So his, his cap number comes down. It gives you a little bit more wiggle room to make moves next year. Cause obviously what we saw today with Christian Kirk going to the Jaguars, uh, the price tag for Terry McLaurin just went up next year. So I feel like the, the Wentz deal, it, it, it really is kind of a, you know, it, it, is it the shocker that we all wanted? No, it's not Deshaun Watson. It's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, Russell Wilson. It's not Aaron Rodgers. But let's be honest, I, I don't think they were ever in the running for those three guys. And the best part of this trade, in a way, is it frees up that one to be a good player versus a quarterback in waiting. Right. Yeah. I because mean, they're, they're, not, they're not high on the quarterback class this year. That's apparent. Yeah, it, you know, I, I hear Carolina may actually trade up to like three to get uh, Malik Willis, but that would be a reach. Mm -hmm. I mean, this way they can say, okay, we got a quarterback enough. Let's go for a receiver uh, on there. And you need a good receiver for two reasons. One, you need an extra guy. But two, suppose you can't re-sign Terry in a couple of years. You know, you got to replenish that rank too. Mm -hmm. Maybe Terry thinks, oh, this team has never gone to the Super Bowl. I want to go play for a contender. You know, they could franchise them a year, but eventually, as we see with these players, they do go uh, on there. So 
you know, you can go for that. You could go for maybe, and if they went for a middle linebacker, I think everybody would melt down because, <laughs> you know, on that. Maybe no, and, they, the, and the junkies made this point this morning. You can't have, you know, Jamin Davis, Cole Holcomb, and a rookie. That can't be your starting three. Yeah, that's true. So uh, going on to free agency is just kicked off, and already the commanders have lost two players, as expected. Tim Settle signed with Buffalo, and Brandon Sheriff went to Jacksonville, so we'll never see him again. <laughs> uh, that's the black hole of the NFL, but he got paid. Uh, I, I mean, I was, we haven't seen the terms yet, have we? No, nah, it's they've been holding off, which is a little weird because they, you know, you see other terms. And here's the thing with contracts: uh, I just remember Stephen Davis's agent kept saying it's nine years, ninety million. It's like nobody signs a nine-year deal. No, it's nine years, ninety million. Well, it was really like the last three years were sixty million, which you're never going to see. It was really like a three-year, twenty-five million dollar deal. Mm. So believe all these numbers that the agents like to throw out there because agents are soulless people they'll say whatever uh but i'm, I'm sure he, he got decent money and you're in florida where there's no state income tax that's nice uh, on there but you know i knew sheriff we all knew sheriff was going in honestly he was hurt so much and schweitzer did okay i mean mm -hmm. sheriff's better but it, it sucks to lose a number four overall pick you know, who's still a decent player, but it just you just couldn't pay him the money. And and Settle's just caught behind a stack position. So you have to go. And I think they'll get a third round comp compensation pick next year for Sheriff. So I mean that helps a little and bit. And I tell you, the settle the settle one kind of hurts a little bit just because we all pretty much can lock it up that Deron Payne won't be here next season, uh, you know, when he's a free agent. So you know, it would have been nice to have him mixed in with Ioannidis and, and Allen and actually get settled some decent playing time. But, you know, that, that that's that defensive line is just filled with first round draft picks. It was going to be hard for settle to crack that nut. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised that we haven't been hearing things about J.D. McKissick. I figured that they would go after him hard to keep him. I really want him to stay. Um, but you know, honestly, Rick, it's going to be bargain shopping, you know, and that's what it has kind of been the past couple of years. I know they made a couple of big splashes on day one last year with, I think it was Fitz, uh, William Jackson, and maybe Curtis Samuel were day one, uh, yeah. picks or signings. Fitz was a one year, $10 million deal. What a bargain that ended up, even if you only played 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, I was going to say it was a hell of a payday for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He ends up finishing the season in Buffalo half naked cheering on the bills. But yeah. but at least it was only a 10 million deal. But unlike Wentz, who's 28, you know, but yeah, they're they're not going to spend. They're not going to spend any money this year, too. And they just don't have it under the uh, cap. I mean, they, they've re-signed um, what Apke. They've re-signed Tyler Larson. These are all depth guys. Apke's been pretty decent on teams, but I don't see him. At, I hope to God he never has to play starting defense. Um, yeah, they're, they're both minimum kind of guys. So. Yeah, they're just they're 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 roster fillers. Yeah. Um, I think the two uh, of our guys that we need to bring back, I, the two that really need to come. Actually, there's three. I want to see McKissick come back. I want to see uh, DeAndre Carter return, and I definitely I, I think they need to keep Bobby McCann. Um, if they don't have the money, um, to go after a safety on the free agent market, I know a lot of people have been pointing towards Terrell Edmonds, the the safety from the Steelers. I believe he played at Virginia Tech. So, obviously, that's a guy that I, you would like to target, but what kind of money does he want, you know? I mean, uh, Bobby McCann is probably a couple million dollars a year as to where this kid, Edmonds, is probably going to be double digits a year. If the other he, guy I'd like to see him keep under under the unrestricted free agents, I wouldn't mind seeing him keep Cornelius Lucas. I mean, he played about oh, yeah, 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he got about half the season last year. Um Tory McTire was interesting. We you know, got hurt, so we didn't get to see it. Mm -hmm. Jared Norris, I like Jared Norris as a you know a cheap guy. Um, it's not bad. And then you have guys like uh, Cam Sims. You know you can get cheap. Adam Humphreys, that I bet Adam Humphreys sides elsewhere because he just didn't get any play last year, and he did fine when he did play. But I think he'll he'll want to go somewhere else. I think Humphreys really. Obviously, aside from Fitz not being able to play, but I think that Humphrey uh, Fitzpatrick's injuries impacted uh, Humphreys the most. I feel like 
Humphreys was brought in here as a Fitzpatrick safety blanket type thing. And when Fitz went out, I think Humphreys kind of, you know, lost some of the, he lost the spot on his, on the depth chart. Yeah. And Ricky Seals Jones, but I don't really see resigning him. Um, you know, he wasn't meant to play a lot. I could see them drafting a tight end because, you know, in the end, Logan Thomas didn't have surgery until there at the end of the season. And they say he really won't be ready until training camp, you know, maybe. So you're actually, gonna, I wouldn't be surprised if they look for a pass catching tight end. Yeah. yeah. And I was really, I was really kind of hoping that they would take a swing at Mo Alley Cox from the Colts, but he stayed with the Colts. Uh, Uzama ended up going, leaving the Bengals. I can't remember who he, I think he signed him with the Jets. So, you know, the tight ends, they're coming off the board. Uh, Seals Jones is kind of an older guy. Uh, he, he did fill in pretty well for Logan. And of course we have John Bates, but he's more of a blocking tight end fullback type guy. So, um, yeah, I could see them definitely going, going tight end in the draft. I also think, I think the draft this year, I know you want a wide receiver in the first round. I think they go corner or safety in the first round. And then I think they ended up getting their wide receiver in the second round. Yeah. There'll be a corner there of restricted free agents. Keep, you can keep one. There's three of them. Kyle Allen, Joey Sly, and Garrett Gilbert. Definitely keeping like, Joey. Yeah, keeping Joey Sly. I like – I don't think he missed a kick no. last year. And, you know, he got hurt, but, I, you know, he can't run down the field very far for pulls a hammy. But I don't think he missed any. And it's too bad the other guy who came in, you know, was, was okay. You know, Brian Johnson, you know, looked like a decent kicker too. Mm-hmm. Could you find both and have a camp? Yeah, I guess you could, but I doubt they will. You know, an exclusive free agents who they keep if they want. You know, Keith Ismail, who got hurt, but mm. you know, that is it. Bun Bunmi Rotimi, uh, he played a little bit at the very end last season. Showed something. I bet they resign him. Daniel Wise. I Daniel Wise had a couple good games. Yeah, I bet they resign him. And there's three other people I barely even know their name. I don't yeah. know. What they I, I've heard John Talt's name a couple times, but I couldn't pick him out of a lineup. I'll tell you that. But yeah, he played at the end of the season. They have Dylan Cantrell. I totally missed it on that one. Never even know. heard of that guy. Milo Effler. I don't know who that is either. But the roster. I guess they're, they're probably I, I, look they're, between the draft and free agency, there's three main spots that they need to focus on now with Wentz. They need to go wide receiver, they need secondary help, and they need uh linebackers. <laughs> they need a linebacker bad. I know Holcomb can tackle and Holcomb is a tackling machine, but you know, Jamin Davis is not looking like a first round draft pick. It looks like a huge reach by them last year. Um, you know, John Bostick's not coming back. I don't think you kick the tires on him again. They've, they've got to find it. And there's going to be linebackers out there. I know that everybody's pointing to the kid from Carolina coming here. I can't even remember his name, but, uh, you know, I, look, they're not going to be in a running for Bobby Wagner. You know, they, they were, they're not going to get in these big name guys, but, I, I could definitely see tomorrow and Wednesday they're going bargain bin shopping. Yeah, well, it's it's going to be interesting. You know, they need somebody who can cover a tight end because I've really come to appreciate the NFL, how much more tight ends are, are threats. And this team can't cover a tight end on a short route, save their soul for years. I haven't now. been able to do that for 15 years. That's what Jamie Davis was supposed to do, and he didn't do it. So – you got to do that. You got to have one. I mean, it's really an unappreciated thing. We talk so much about receivers, but tight ends, man, can be backbreakers. You know, Gronk's a, re- a free agent. Man, I'd love to have Gronk. Nah, Gronk's know? going to Tampa. I know, but well, especially Brady back. But well, Gronk, I like- look, he, Gronk's either going to Tampa or he's going to the WWE because he actually signed a contract with the WWE before he came out of con- uh, retirement to go back to the Broncos. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, Gronk would be fun to cover, if nothing else, man. Yeah, well, all right, well, it's these shows go quickly. A lot of free agency talk. Baseball is coming back. The NCAA tournament's going on. And uh, I picked Gonzaga to win it all in my bracket, if you're watching out there. That means tick somebody else. I like Auburn, too, to make the final. All right, we got to get out of here. I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.